Now that we know the sum formulas for sine and cosine, <clears throat> we can easily derive the double angle formulas and the half angle formulas, but let's start with the double angle formulas. Okay, so we know from a previous video that, uh, you know, the sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So we're going to use that to our advantage in the double angle formula. So if you're asked to find the sine of 2x, you can think about the sine of 2x as being the sine of x plus x, and now we can use exactly the uh, sum formula for sine. So the sum formula says, for sine says, take the sine of the first one times the cosine of the second one plus the cosine of the first one times the sine of the second one. So I have <coughs> sine of 2x is the sine of x plus x, which is sine x cosine x plus cosine x sine x. But sine x times cosine x and cosine x times sine x, those two things are the exact same thing because multiplication is commutative. So I can just write this as sine x cosine x plus sine x cosine x. So uh, I can just add them up. Sine x cosine x plus sine x cosine x is exactly 2 sine x cosine x. So that's the proof for the, uh, for the double angle formula for sine. Um, let's prove the double angle formula for cosine. So for cosine, I'd have cosine 2x is uh, cosine uh, x plus x. <clears throat> and um, this one, there's actually three different forms that you should probably know when you're working, um, when you're working trigonometric identities. You're going to want to know all three forms, and um, the hard part is sort of which one do you use when. So it's good to know all three. So by the sum formula for cosine, I can say that this is uh, cosine x times cosine x minus sine x times sine x, which is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So that's perhaps the first form you should know. Maybe I'll put a little, a little, uh, you know, one by it. So that's the first form you should know. Now we can use uh, the Pythagorean um, theorem, the trigonometric Pythagorean theorem that says sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And so uh, equivalently we can say that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine squared x and cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. So I got that by, I got sine squared x by itself by just subtracting cosine squared x from both sides and uh, likewise for cosine squared x. So what I can do is um, plug in sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x right there. So I can say that this is equal to cosine squared x minus cosine, uh, 1 minus cosine squared x. That's by the Pythagorean identity there. So this is uh, cosine squared x minus 1 plus cosine squared x which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And that's, that's the second form you're going to want to know. That's the second form you want to know. We'll actually use this in a second to prove a half angle identity, half angle formula. And the third one you want to know is um, at this point here, plug in um, for cosine squared x, plug in 1 minus sine squared x. So I have 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x. This is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And that's the third one you want to know. So these are the three, these are the three double angle formulas for cosine uh, of a double angle cosine 2x. Cosine 2x is either cosine squared x minus sine squared x, or 2 cosine squared x minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. You're going to want to know all three of those. Okay, so uh, now that we know the double angle formulas, we can actually get the half angle formulas. Half angle formula. 
So for the for the half angle formulas, um, you know, let's start here. Cosine two x. Cosine two x is two cosine x minus one. We just we just showed this. Okay. Well, note that x is exactly half of two x. So equivalently, I could say the cosine of x equals two cosine of x over two. Oh, this is supposed to be squared. Uh, this is minus one. So this is the same. I hope you can see that. You know, here I have x, and this is twice as big. And here I have x over two, and x is twice as big. So uh, let's just try to get cosine x over two by itself. So I'm going to add one to both sides so that I have two cosine squared of x over two equals cosine x plus 1, divide both sides by 2, or multiply both sides by 1 half. So I have cosine squared of x over 2 is 1 half of cosine x plus 1. And then take the square root. So I have cosine of x over 2, which is a half angle right there, is plus or minus the square root of 1 half, uh, one half of cosine x plus 1. And the plus or minus is going to be, te going to be dependent upon which quadrant you're in. So sometimes cosine is positive, uh, depending on the quadrant. Sometimes it's negative, depending on the quadrant. So here's the half angle formula for uh, for cosine. Okay, so uh, we start the half angle formula for sine um, using a different form of the double angle formula for cosine. So here we started with cosine two x is two cosine squared x minus one, but there's another one that deals with the sine squared x, and we'll use that. So we'll use we'll use cosine two x is one minus two sine squared x. And once again, we can just rewrite this to say cosine x is one minus two sine squared of x over two, right? So since this angle is twice as big as this, uh, equivalently this angle is twice as big as this. So these two. Uh, these two statements are really the same, really the same statement. And we're just going to get sine x over two by itself by first subtracting one from both sides. So I have negative two sine squared of x over two uh, is equal to cosine x minus one. And then I'll multiply both sides by minus one half. So I have sine squared of x over two is minus one half times cosine x minus one. Um, this is this is the same as um, one minus cosine x, I guess, all over two. So I distribute all of the minus that's a minus cosine and a positive one, so that's over two. <coughs> and then um, and then we're gonna take the square root of both sides, and so we have sine of x over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine x all over 2. And that, that concludes the proof. So uh, now we know now we know the half angle formulas and the double angle formulas. So you're going to be able to work your trigonometric identity problems much easier by knowing by knowing these things.